everybody, it's Quincy from All Ears, and I am here with a brand new video. We are at Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort today, which just reopened, and we are going to take a tour of the newly renovated rooms, the resort as a whole, and just see what kind of fun we can get into. I'm really excited, I hope you are too, so let's get going. <laughs> So I am strolling up to Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I'm in the main parking area here and you'll notice that we've got a little bit of a walk to the front door and then up to our room. So I just have one bag, so I'm making the walk by myself, but you are welcome to pull up to the check-in. You're welcome to pull up there and have bell services snag your luggage for you. If you've got a larger party or heavier bags or you just don't wanna carry your bags, you can stop by there and then come to do self-parking. They also have a valet parking option, since this is a deluxe resort. All right, so I am standing here in the lobby at Wilderness Lodge. This is one of my favorite lobbies in all of Disney World. It is gorgeous in here. It's super grand, very high ceilings, lots of amazing theming. We're gonna do some serious exploring later. But first, I wanted to let you know that you can use mobile check-in here. So like the other Disney World Resort hotels, you can use mobile check-in here. And that means that you can check in using the My Disney Experience app around 10 days prior to the start of your trip means you get to skip the front desk when you get here. Now in the past, I have had it take a while for my room to be ready even past check-in time, which is usually 3 p.m. But today, my room was ready at 2.44 p.m. I wasn't even here yet and I got a text that my room was ready. So I do not have to stop by the front desk. Instead, I can head right upstairs. You might notice a few things when you first walk into the Wilderness Lodge lobby after you're done ooing and aahing. And that's crickets. You might hear crickets. They do play cricket noises in here to help it feel a little bit more like that Pacific Northwest theming. There is also this big 80 foot tall fireplace. You'll also find a lot of touches inspired by the Pacific Northwest here in the lobby, totem poles, wood carvings, real artifacts, things like that. It is very, very cool. I cannot wait to explore. But right now, I think we head up to my room. Bit of a trek later and I did make it to my room here on the fourth floor. Here's the final of many hallways that I walked down. Of course, you have a couple options to open your door. You can use a traditional room key if you get it from the front desk. You can use the My Disney Experience app with the mobile door unlock feature using your Bluetooth, or you can use a magic band, which is what I'm gonna do. So yes, these rooms were just renovated during the closure of this resort. And since the resort fully reopened today, even though it's been open to DVC since last July, we finally get a glimpse at these renovated rooms. And it looks pretty snazzy in here. It's definitely brightened up. I'm excited to explore. And to do that, I think I need some supplies. Namely, can't explore a wilderness lodge room without a cowboy hat. I don't make the rules. It's scientifically proven it is better to explore hotel rooms while wearing a cowboy hat. So now I'm ready, let's look around. So Wilderness Lodge is one of the deluxe Disney World resorts that is the highest price category above both moderate and value. And it has the smallest rooms of any deluxe resort at around 340 square feet each room, but still deluxe, still gonna have a lot more amenities, be a little bit larger than most moderate and value options. So unlike at the value resorts I've toured, your full length mirror, Howdy, is going to be on this exterior sliding door to the bathroom instead of inside the bathroom. You come into the room, we've got this wardrobe which has double sliding doors. The closet does have an extra pillow and an extra blanket, several coat hangers. Also in this storage unit as you come in, you've got this cabinet that has a handheld steamer and you're safe. Handheld steamer is an awesome amenity because I know that everything I own is wrinkled all the time. Other amenities are right here and that's you've got your ice box, you've got your Keurig, inside this top drawer, lots of different coffee uh, and tea little options. Not a lot of options, but enough options to get you by. And this is actually the first kind of cute detail of the renovation. So you'll see that this has this cute little Disney print on the back with Bambi and a butterfly. And is there an owl in Bambi? I've never seen Bambi. Don't get mad at me. I know I should have seen Bambi, but it's, I know what happens, okay? I know it's sad and I don't, I just don't, I have never been in the mood where I'm like, I wanna watch a tiny, cute, adorable deer be sad. So I, I haven't watched it. It's on my list, I'm gonna watch it, but um, I haven't. 
Because I don't want to watch, I don't want to, it's sad. I don't want to watch the sad part. But mom, I know what happens to the mom, okay? I don't want to watch it. And then barring my ignorance of whether or not there's an owl in Bambi, I feel like there probably is. I don't know. We can say that's owl from Winnie the Pooh if we want. There's this cabinet down here that has your mini fridge, which is very clutch when you want to store any leftovers or any things like that. There are options for connecting rooms here at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I obviously am not using one since I'm here by myself, but that is something that you can look into when you're booking your hotel room. The old TV units here were pretty bulky, and I think to helped contribute to the walls feeling small, but this one, uh, obviously it's not a TV unit. It's just the dresser. It takes up a little bit less space, and the TV's flush against the wall, which is a lot um, cleaner looking. Kind of goes with a lot of the refurbishments Disney is doing right now where they just kind of clean things up. Another thing to note is that the floors in here did used to be carpet. They are now that laminate flooring that we're seeing pretty much everywhere. There's a resort refurbishment. My favorite thing that I've noticed so far in this tour is that there are cookies on the dresser. They left me cookies and they're not just chocolate chip. That looks like almonds, almond cookies and chocolate chip cookies. Wow. Okay. Well, I love almond cookies, so I will be devouring those later. And the chocolate chip might come after that. Pretty sizable storage unit. And when you add that on with that large cabinet over there and the sizable closet, you're in good shape when it comes to storing luggage, not even to mention the underbed space. This is the new little sitting area situation. You've got these pretty blue chairs. These are actually very pretty. Um, a nice table and the table does pull out to add some more space if you need it. Pretty happy with this refurbishment. I know there's some things like some concerns that refurbished rooms kind of lose their charm. They become very like clean and modern. And I know a lot of the value resorts all have a very similar feel now, but this one still has some good Wilderness Lodge touches, I think. The, the art is nice. That accent wall is very nice. The light fixtures are still very Wilderness Lodge-y. The headboards, so I am happy with it. I was a little nervous, but I'm happy. There's also this in the wall, which I thought was just an art installation, but then I saw that this light switch is complicated. And if you turn it on, the art turns on and it's a light. I cannot wait until it gets dark tonight so that I can turn that on and look at it. I'm sure it's gonna be very pretty. The headboards themselves have these little cylinders in them and I didn't know what it was so I messed with it. And it's a reading light and they're very pointed and you can adjust them very easily and they turn on automatically when you open them up. Rooms at Fort Wilderness do primarily have two queen beds, although there are a select few rooms that feature a queen bed and a double bed. And then some of the club level rooms feature king beds. If you go into the DVC, you've got villas and then of course the cabins, which are a whole nother story. But when it comes to standard rooms at Wilderness Lodge, two queen beds is most likely what you're gonna get. More outlets, because there can never be too many. And this is where you'll find a pretty cute detail in this accent wall. It's Chip and Dale tossing an acorn through the trees. That's so cute. I'm moseying. This whole resort room tour, I've been moseying, moseying over to show you the, the cowboys mosey. Not if they're on a horse, then they gallop, but they mosey when they're not on a horse. It's just facts. Well, I'm excited to go out to the balcony, so let's go, especially because I got a better view than I was supposed to. So I actually got a standard view room. That's what I booked, but this is not a standard view. So what we're looking at here, if we kind of look around, you've got cabins, which are generally a part of the nature view. I've got this pond directly outside. I can see a couple of the little bridges on, pro on the property of this hotel. It's a very nice view. And then actually, if you look up here, <laughs> that noise you hear is the horn, horns hawking from the boats because we are just behind the cabins when it comes to the water. But you can see the monorail track over there. I've seen the monorail pass by a few times since I've been here. Just beyond that is the train station in Magic Kingdom. And just peeking over the trees right there is Cinderella Castle. So I was supposed to have a standard view. This would actually probably be a nature fireworks view. So that's, I went from the lowest tier view to the highest tier view. And I'll tell you why that happened. So the lowest tier view here is a standard tier view. And I actually requested that I get one of the newly renovated rooms. So you can make room requests when you are booking a Disney World hotel. They are never guaranteed. They are always just requests, but I called guest services and I asked for a newly renovated room so I could show it to you guys since I know they're brand new today. 
and guest services told me it's just a request it's not guaranteed i did get the newly renovated room so my request was honored and beyond that getting the newly renovated room might have been what pushed me from having a standard view of the parking lot or the roof to having this beautiful view with glimpses of cinderella castle and the monorail going by and the boats floating to go pick up guests so i'm very pleased with that little surprise i will definitely be sitting out here in the morning well maybe i've got things to do but I might stop there in the morning, but right now let's continue looking around because I think we got some cowboy science to do, folks. Cowboy science, do, 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 cowboy science, do, 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 do. That's the theme song of cowboy science, my new uh, show. Now the problem is I don't think I can do my science in my cowboy hat, um, so you're just going to have to remember that I am a cowboy. Anyway, I wonder how comfy these beds are. <laughs> Verdict. They feel good. They feel like they feel like pretty comfy beds. I think um, I'm gonna get a good night's sleep on these. Again, firmer mattress. I think that's kind of the standard at Disney. You got the firmer mattress. Uh, very solid. Ca caught my fall. If you're falling on the bed like I just did, you're good. Time to test the pillows. <sighs> very nice. <laughs> I do love a Disney pillow because your head really sinks into them. So. You know, the cowboy approved to this bed. We'll see how I feel in the morning though. Maybe it won't be cowboy approved if I can't sleep well. Ooh, stay tuned. <sighs> so good. Oh, kinda hurt my neck. My science is complete. Cowboy hat is back on. I'm not breathing hard, which means I must be getting better at science or maybe cowboy science is just something I'm better at than pirate science, like at my Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort tour, so. I don't know. I'll have to figure this out. Oh. This is better than I thought it was going to be. Mm. When people ask me what my favorite dessert in Disney World is, I'm going to be like the almond cookies they give you when you check into Wilderness Lodge. Mm. It's so soft. Crunchy on the outside. Mm. Now that I've filled up with complimentary cookies, let's check out the bathroom. Howdy. So, pretty sizable bathroom. You've got the other side of this pane, but I will say they aren't actually transparent or anything like that. And they are two different lights. So if you turn this one on, it does not turn on the one in the other room and vice versa. We've also got pretty big mirror. I can see all of me. Hello. <laughs> I look silly. And then also you can do a regular old faraway mirror. Sink wise, we're looking at a double vanity. There is a good amount of room on the vanity as well for your toothbrush and makeup and things like that. Lots of hand towels. There are five on the vanity alone and then I see even more under it. You've got body lotion, facial soap available in this really cute uh, soap dish. And then underwear, words, underwords, that's not a word. Under here, there is a blow dryer, more hand towels, tissue box, extra tissues, extra toilet paper, and these little cabinets. Checking out the sh shower and commode room. We have the commode itself in all its glory. There is this very cool totem pole print. Totem poles are big here. I don't know if you've noticed, and I do mean that literally and figuratively. Shower wise, we've got this tub as a well as a glass door that kind of hides the shower. So you can take a bath or shower here. We've got the standard Disney refillable dispensers that are good for the environment. There's a little shelf for anything that you might have brought. And then we've got a waterfall shower head. And this one actually has an added shower head with a little bit more pressure. Not too small, pretty sizable. Even the tub, I actually do feel like a taller grown adult might be able to take a bath in this tub comfortably. I don't like baths because I am long and bathtubs are usually not long enough. So I talked about views a little bit. There are four different view categories available here at this resort. There's the standard view category, which is going to be roof, parking lot, driveway, that sort of thing. There is the nature view, which is typically woods, courtyard view, which can be the pool or bay lake, and then nature fireworks view, which is what I've got, I would assume, since I can see Cinderella Castle. 
So I'm sitting on the balcony because it's so nice out here to talk to you a little bit about pricing at this hotel. So here at Wilderness Lodge, it's going to have a slightly lower price than the other deluxe hotels, but it's still going to be pretty pricey. You've got Disney prices, you've got Disney deluxe pricing. So definitely check those rates. Rates do vary. They vary depending on the popularity of the time you're coming. And you can also find special offers. Remember, if you spot a special offer after you've booked, you can tack that on after. Just give a call and ask a cast member to help you tacking that on. But prices here range. Um, king bed rooms are a little bit more than queen bed rooms, but prices in general range for a standard room for about $430 to about $830, for a nature room for about $500 to about $850, for a courtyard room for about $540 to about $860, for a nature fireworks room for about $690 to about $1,040, and then for a standard club level room, if you're going up to club level, you've got $700 to $1,160 range. And and then finally, for the deluxe club level rooms, you've got about a $910 night to about a $1,570 night. So some of the rooms here are pretty pricey. Even the base rooms, you're in up into the 400s per night. That can stack up quick. So this is a pricey hotel. It might not be for everyone. It's definitely not for every budget. But if you can swing it, it is a very nice stay. So before I head out to take you guys on the resort tour, I am actually gonna mobile order a snack for a little later. We're going to be going to Roaring Fork and trying a really iconic treat. So I'm going to go ahead and mobile order it for the window that I want so that we don't have to worry about any long waits as we get closer to dinner time. This is a pro tip. Definitely think ahead when you think you might want to get food, even if it's a whole meal, if it's a snack, whatever. If that spot has mobile order, take a seat before you go anywhere and you just mobile order. Then you don't have to worry about having a long wait later. So Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a deluxe resort here at Disney World. It is themed after the Pacific Northwest. The resort did just fully reopen despite the fact that the DVC aspects, the Disney Vacation Club aspects, have been available since July of 2020. But the regular non-DVC rooms are now available again. The whole resort is back to operations. So that is pretty exciting. I'm super excited that I'm here today, the first day that it has reopened. The resort opened in 1994 and it was modeled after the historic Old Faithful Lodge that is located in Yellowstone National Park. And you'll definitely notice that in the architecture. You'll also notice it in some of the very exciting water features like a geyser, an actual, well, it's not a real geyser, but it certainly seems like it sometimes. And also check out these beautiful rocks and waterfalls out here just in the center courtyard. This is a seriously gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous resort. It might be one of my favorites when it comes to theming. You probably saw when I got here earlier, the lobby here at Wilderness Lodge is spectacular. You can see that it goes up very high. There are actually seven floors in the main building of Wilderness Lodge and six floors on the wings. Our room is in one of the wings. And the lobby is actually considered to be on the second floor. So pool is the first floor. You kind of got to walk down some stairs and a hill to get over there. This hotel always felt really Disney to me as a kid. Walking in always made me really excited and really happy. It made me feel like I was actually at Disney World because of such spectacular theming. This totem pole is so tall. So up there on the seventh floor, you can't see from here in the lobby, but the concierge level is actually on the second floor and the concierge lounge does open to the lobby. So concierge rooms actually just became available again after temporarily being unavailable during the resort closures, but the Wilderness Lodge club level lounge is still unavailable and it won't reopen until December 16th. If you are awestruck by some of the architecture and artifacts and things at Wilderness Lodge, then in normal times you can take the Wonders of the Lodge tour, which hopefully will return. A lot of people don't know that some of the resorts offer free tours. This is one of them during normal times. Also, this fireplace is on and it is fully in the mid 80s today, but I appreciate it because I like feeling cozy no matter how hot outside it is. The Buttons and Bells Game Arcade. This is super cute. It looks like a little like old saloon entrance almost. I really loved Lincoln Logs when I was a kid and this resort just taps right on into that. I love Lincoln Logs. Those are so fun. I should get some. So part of the reason the lobby can get a little on the noisy side is because of Whispering Canyon Cafe. Kind of a misnomer. It is a cafe, but it is not a Whispering Canyon. This restaurant can get noisy. It is a table service and the servers kind of bring you some hilarious hijinks and things like that. 
I'll tell you, in normal times, be careful asking for ketchup. You might have spotted a horse race while you were here. Right now, unfortunately, some of those hijinks and little funny moments are on pause, but those servers are still bent on making you laugh. You will still have a fun time here. You'll still get those delicious all-you-can-eat skillets. So it's still a great spot, even though that experience is a little bit modified at the moment. And we're right here at Wilderness Lodge Mercantile, which is the merchandise shopping location here in Wilderness Lodge. So right when you walk in, you've got some specialty Wilderness Lodge merchandise. This is a deluxe resort, so you're going to see more merch to commemorate your stay than you might see at a value. There's even some very pretty oversized mugs like that. I love this. I'm a glamper, not a camper. That's what that sticker says. Me too, sticker. So there's even wilderness themed merch that might not be wilderness lodge. Lots of wilderness themed merch. And then, of course, some standard Disney merchandise as well. You can check in here if you need a pair of ears. Last minute, if you need a coonskin cap, it happens. I've been there. Another thing that is really nice about resorts that have Disney Vacation Club villas is that they tend to have more food offerings in their merchandise stores because those food offerings are geared at people in the villas. They're the Essentials Wall, my favorite wall in any gift shop, medicine, sunscreen, aloe, goggles, cooling towels, moleskin, earplugs, anything that you might need when things go awry. So I am really excited to check out the pool, but before we do that, I do want to just go talk about some of these restaurants that are off to the side of the lobby. So that's where we are headed right now. Also, remember this little bridge, it'll be important later. That's what they call foreshadowing in the biz. So if you head this way, you might see some Snow White and the Seven Dwarves artwork, as well as a check-in desk for Artist Point. So Artist Point is a restaurant here that hosts storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White, which is a character meal. And I think it just might be one of the coolest character meals on property. It features Snow White, Grumpy, Dopey, and the Evil Queen, which is every kind of meat ever, I think. Now, Artist Point is still closed at this time. Who doesn't want to meet the Evil Queen? Most people? That's fair. But what is open right now is Territory Lounge, which is the lounge that sort of steps right next to Storybook Dining. And it's very cozy, specialty cocktails, beer, wine, and more. And there's small plates, including a very, very good charcuterie board. I think it's about $22. But if you're a charcuterie fan, then Territory Lounge might be a good stop. They're playing diners, drive-ins, and dives on the TV in Territory Lounge, which just cemented this as potentially my favorite lounge in all of Disney World. I love Guy Fieri. I love diners, drive-ins, and dives. There's also a map on the ceiling. Lots to look at. All right, so remember I said to remember this bridge later because it was important? That's because this right here is the geyser that is the start of Silver Creek Falls, which then runs into the Copper Creek Springs Pool. Usually it's bubbling. Today, the reaction that makes it bubbling must be on pause. Maybe it's the humidity. But I'm gonna walk it. Maybe my editor can make a cool speed walking of me walking down there. You can see the geyser. Let's go. All right, Copper Creek Pool in all its glory. Copper Creek Springs Pool, that's a lot of words. In all its glory, this is the main feature pool here at Wilderness Lodge. There is one other pool, but this is the, the big one, the big kahuna. It's got a 67 foot water slide, kids pool, hot and cold whirlpool spas. There's that salon by the springs, which I'll talk about when we get down there. And of course, it's all in view of Fire Rock Geyser, which is like the creme de la creme of entertainment here at Wilderness Lodge. I have potentially the worst news that I could possibly have. I was walking up, I thought this area looked a little different than I'm used to seeing it. And sure enough, Fire Rock Geyser is not currently operating. So during my stay here, the reopening day of Wilderness Lodge, I won't get to see Fire Rock Geyser shoot up into the sky, which is so sad. But the good news is you can see Fire Rock Geyser shoot up into the sky today because we have the power of movie magic. Editor, lay that geyser clip. For this 
very pretty building with a lot of Native American art inspiration is the Salon by the Springs. And it is temporarily closed right now, again, due to the global health crisis. However, when it is open, it offers manicures, pedicures, hair services, and more. So not a full spa, but definitely an option if you're looking for a little bit of pampering or just some, you know, a new cut, new do. You can get that here, right next to Copper Creek Pool. All right, I am firmly in my mobile order window at Roaring Fork, which is a quick service option here. I mobile ordered back in the room so that my food would be ready to go when I wanted it, which is now. So I'm headed over to Roaring Fork so we can have a little bit of a treat, a little bit of a coffee because I drink way too much caffeine. It's who I am. So Roaring Fork is located here on the first floor. It's a couple steps from the pool, a couple steps from the lobby. Pretty great location. And this is the quick service spot. They've got some grab and go options. They've got full meals, specialty coffees. We're gonna be trying one of those specialty coffees, the Gold Rush Latte. I'm very excited for that. And they've also got breakfast, even all day breakfast, chicken and waffles. Wink, wink. I might be having that for breakfast tomorrow. And by might, I mean that's in the plan. Since I'm over ordered, I just wait outside. I tap time here and go ahead and get my order ready. And so I'm just waiting outside the restaurant for that order to be prepped. So once your order is ready, you'll get a notification in the My Disney Experience app. Make sure you have push notifications on. That really helps. And you can head on into the restaurant to the pickup that says I needed for you to get your food. All right, it is mid resort tour snack time from Roaring Fork. I went ahead and got a pretty iconic snack that they have here at Roaring Fork, which is the Campfire Cupcake. This is a chocolate cupcake with chocolate rocks. See them? See the rocks? Chocolate cupcake, chocolate rocks, buttercream, and marshmallow. And look at that. It's literally a little marshmallow on a stick above the campfire icing. It smells very good. I am especially smelling that chocolate cake. Excited to try it. I also got one of the specialty coffee drinks that they have here, and I opted for the Gold Rush Latte, although that is definitely not the only option. I noticed a few different options on the menu. The Gold Rush Latte is vanilla latte and with caramel, which I really like vanilla and caramel, so I'm excited to try it. There's also the S'mores Latte and the Wilderness Spark Latte, which is chocolate hazelnut, but I'm going for the Gold Rush. Excited to give it a shot. I'm starting with the latte because I feel like there's going to be no going back from that campfire cupcake, so. pretty good. It's Joffrey's coffee, vanilla syrup, and actually I was really expecting this to be too sweet because like I don't know when you go to Starbucks and you get two different syrups they usually give you just double the syrup and it's super super sweet so that's kind of what I was expecting here. Especially because it's called Gold Rush, makes me think of Sugar Rush, makes me think of Vanilla Bond Sweets, but no it's not too sweet. It's actually kind of delightful. It's a pretty tasty coffee and I do need my mid-evening caffeine fix, don't we all? Don't be like me. Drink your coffee in the morning and then and then do your day, okay? Every bone in my body is telling me to eat this this monster with a fork. Um, but I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna bite it. We're gonna see how it goes. Here it goes. Mmm. Okay, this is one of the better um, resort cupcakes I think I've had. This is a classic here, the campfire cupcake. It's been here a long time. It's gonna be here probably a long time. I hope so, because it's very tasty. I'm gonna eat the little marshmallow on the stick. Oh, look, this stick is made of chocolate. Mmm. I like a real toasted marshmallow. They're actually sort of gooey. You know how they get when you toast them? I'm impressed, this is a win. I'm inclined to think that there is probably icing in the middle because this does not have a lot of icing on top and that seems uncharacteristic. So let's see if I can get, get in there and find out. Mm-hmm. My suspicions were correct. There is icing in the middle. I will still say though, I'm a cake person. I'm not an icing person. When I eat cupcakes, I like the cake more than I like the icing. And some people think that I'm insane because of that and some people agree with me. So if you're a cake person, I actually think this is a good cupcake for you. It does not have that mound of buttercream on top like a lot of cupcakes do. The icing is more decorative than anything. It's fun. There are the chocolate rocks and the icing is covered in cookie crumbles, which I think kind of helps cut the creaminess, which for me can be a little overwhelming. So 
If you're not a big icing person, this might be a good cupcake to try while you're at Disney World. A lot of the cupcakes, super icing heavy. This is also just really good in general. It's super fun because of the chocolate rocks. It's super fun with the little icing fire. So campfire cupcake is a winner in my book. Um, I would get it again and I'm not a big sweets person. So okay, the rabbits here are so big and they seem to fear nothing. And that makes me fear them. Those staying at the Cascade Cabins are pretty close to these Spitfire grill areas, and there are actually a couple of them, but there are two full-out grills that guests are welcome to use. And of course, guests in the regular resort can use them as well. I just don't know if you'll have raw meat on hand in your mini fridge, but if you do, you're welcome to head on over to the Spitfire grilling area. So the Cascade Cabins are one of three different DVC offerings here. There's the Cascade Cabins, the Copper Creek Villas, and then the Boulder Ridge Villas. The, all three of them are Disney Vacation Club offerings, of course. There are a few different room types in the villas. There are studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, I believe three bedrooms, and then of course there are the cabins, which are the largest. As you can see, they are standalone, pretty sizable, like the size of an actual home. You do not have to be in the Disney Vacation Club to rent these cabins or to rent any of the villas. And all of them do share services with the actual core Wilderness Lodge Resort. So you'll share the front desk, you'll share other things like that. But these cabins are really cool. They're very pretty. They're right on the water. And I think they might be a great use of DVC points if that seems like the kind of thing that you might be into. Hello, ladies. These ducks are walking right up to me. Carry on. Have a good day. The coolest wilderness. There's so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven lady ducks. Just going about their day here at Wilderness Lodge. They did say they had wilderness here. Who? I would be foolish not to have believed them. Wilderness Lodge even has a few unique options like fishing at the lodge. Because there is actually a marina and bike rental here. You can rent boats. Fireworks cruises is a pretty big bonus if you're staying here. Of course, those are an upcharge up option, as are any boat rentals, but something to keep in mind that you have an, as an option. There's also a little green in this area, which is where you'll find the movies Under the Stars. And I don't know what's playing tonight, but right now it looks like they're playing Happily Ever After. <laughs> but it's still pretty sunny, so it's hard to see. This little area also has Reunion Station, which is a spot that has all sorts of things. It's got pin trading, it's got crafts. This is where you'll go if you do Mickey tie-dye. Earlier there was cornhole out on the lawn, there's ping pong and things like that. So this is kind of the place to go for some recreational activities. Definitely the kind of spot you wanna check in on your resort day. The Boulder Ridge Villas were actually the first DVC offering to open here. They opened before the Copper Creek Villas and the cabins, opened all the way back in 2002. This building is also where you'll find the Sturdy Branches Health Club, which is the fitness center here at Wilderness Lodge. You do not have to be staying in the Boulder Ridge Villas to visit the Boulder Ridge Pool. It is a smaller pool. It tends to be a little quieter just because it isn't as splashy as the main pool. It's got a Whirlpool Spa, it's got zero depth entry, and it's got some pretty spectacular theming too. A lot of times you see that the main pool has a really good theming and then the secondary pools are kind of standard. This one has awesome theming. There's a mining crane in the middle of the pool, which is pretty darn neat. No slide though. So if you want the slide, you're going to have to go to the main pool. And if you're wondering why I spent all that time making my way all the way to the end of the cabins area, that's because there are actually these little sport courts here at the very end with a basketball hoop and a couple other, like that's four square, also a basketball game. I like four square. But that's pretty cool. You can head over to the sport court, grill out if you're staying at the cabins or at the resort again. What kind of creature leaves these prints? A raccoon maybe? It looks like little people hands and I've been led to believe that that's the kind of hands that raccoons have. So these rooms here on the, if you're staying at the pool, the left wing of the building, these are DVC villas. So you can see their balconies are a little more private. They've got privacy walls as well, which does obstruct the view. And those are right across from Geyser Point, which is kind of a hybrid. There is a table service lounge, which is what we'll be visiting, but there is also 
a quick service walk up if you just want to grab a quick eat or a drink to go take with you by the pool, things like that. But there is a table service lounge. It is lovely. It is on the water. The mobile dine walk-up waitlist is an option that a lot of table service and lounges that don't offer reservations are using right now in Disney World. And even some places that do offer reservations, like Spice Road Table in Epcot offers reservations, but they also do the mobile dine walk-up waitlist. And you can get onto the waitlist from your phone. If it has an hour-long wait and you are riding a ride or about an hour away, you can get on that waitlist and not have to worry about going to the restaurant, finding out it's an hour right when you want to eat. It's another thing that you do have to kind of plan ahead for because it can get busy. Now, I've seen Geyser Point get very, very busy, but tonight the walk-up waitlist only lists it as a five-minute wait. So I probably could have walked up and just gotten on the normal waitlist, but I wanted to show you guys how that walk-up waitlist works. I really love using it, so I am on the waitlist. Okay, my estimated wait was five minutes and my actual wait was one minute. So my table's ready and I'm headed to Geyser Point for dinner. Geyser Point is still using that mobile menu with a QR code. You can also ask for a paper menu if you need one. My server brought me a water. I'm sitting in these comfy chairs right on the water. I can see the boats going by. It's very nice out. And if I wasn't interested in looking at the water, there's a TV playing Family Feud. So I've got options. All right, so dinner and a drink. I opted for the bison bacon cheeseburger, which is a fairly popular meal here. It comes with crispy onion straws. You can see those on there. Marionberry sauce, which is what's coming out of here. It's not, didn't get my meat super rare. It's just marionberry sauce. And there's a garlic aioli as well. And it comes served with fries and ketchup. I wanted to get the, one of the cocktails that they have here that are served with specialty liquors from the Northwest. And that's something that's exclusive to Geyser Point. So I went for the Huckleberry Punch, which is made with 44 degree North Mountain Huckleberry Vodka, Boy's Creme de Cassis. I don't know how to say that, so hopefully that was close. Uh, lemon juice and cranberry juice, which just sounds delightful. I really like Creme de Cassis. Cassis? Creme de Cassis? I really like that. I think it's grape, but I really like it. It's very tasty, so I'm excited to give this a try. And also, obviously, my beautiful, beautiful burger. All right, going in on the Huckleberry Punch. Ooh, that's very good. It's very light. It's not aggressive flavors, which I was kind of expecting. Very fruity. I would say I don't think any of the flavors in this are any stronger than any of the others. I taste the creme de cassis. I taste the lemon. I taste the cranberry. Um, I think I taste huckleberry, although I'll tell you I'm not really sure what huckleberry tastes like, but I think I taste it. This is very refreshing. And it's fruity without being like syrupy because most of the fruit that's in this is on the real side. Like creme de cassis is of course a liqueur, so that cuts the sweetness of the fruitiness. And then you've got cranberry juice and lemon and add that huckleberry vodka. And it's pretty tasty. I will say my favorite drink here is actually the cucumber and mint mojito, um, which Morgan actually recommended to me and I wish she had it because now Every drink I have here just doesn't live up to that one, but this is very good and I would get it again if I wasn't bound by my own personal law to the cucumber mint mojito. Try and fry out. It's pretty good. They're hot. They're thin. I like my fries thin. Got a nice amount of crisp to them. Tastes like standard Disney fries. I don't think they're back there in the back cutting up potatoes, but they do the job. They're definitely not these super like doughy fries you can get somewhere. Doughy's not the word. You know what? Potato meaty fries. The ones that have a lot of potato meat, but mm. last but certainly not least, we have it's dripping. We have the burger. This thing is huge. It's like the size of my head. Maybe like two of them would be the size of my head. So very big. It is dripping. It is juicy and beautiful. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to take a bite without getting it all over my face, but I'm going to try. That was a workout to get that, that bite bitten. Okay. It's a good burger. It's a, that is a restaurant burger right there. It's um, It comes cooked medium and it comes with fries, which I said was okay because that's actually my preference on a burger cooked, but they will cook it to order if you'd like it cooked a different way. 
very unique flavors with the marionberry sauce, I think, and definitely I love um, onion strings. The meat is bison, which is going to be a little bit more tender than your typical like beef. So I'm definitely enjoying that. It makes for a soft bite. I almost wish there was something with a little crunch on this. That would be my one complaint just because texturally it's a lot of soft and even though it's different kinds of soft, it's a lot of soft. So I could take something with a little crunch. But if you are a restaurant burger kind of person, you're looking for to step your game up and you want a good burger in Disney World, Geyser Point might be your stop. And you might see me here because I'm just going to be here drinking these delicious drinks and eating these delicious foods forever, probably. So, we'll see you here. I take it back. I got a bite of bacon, and it was the crunch I was looking for. So, I just hadn't gotten any bites with the bacon on it, but that makes it textually perfect. This is a really good burger. Serious bonus of dining at Geyser Point, coming in hot. If you're here at 9.30ish, it's actually a little before 9.30 right now, the electrical water pageant will flow by and perform for Wilderness Lodge. I love the electrical water pageant. It has been around since before I was alive, I'm pretty sure. It was supposed to be a limited time thing. People loved it so much they just kept it on per permanently. And now, if you see little green lights floating along the water, I recommend you grab a spot where you can see. As always, if you are going to stay at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, you do have access to the standard Disney World Resort Hotel perks like the transportation, free parking at the theme parks, airport transportation with the Magical Express through the remainder of 2021. That is going to be discontinued in 2022. Um, you're also going to get early theme park entry later this year. Well, you'll get to go into the theme park of your choice 30 minutes prior to the opening time. And you also get a little bump to the advanced dining reservation window. Most people get 60 days in advance to make their dining reservations. Those staying at the resorts get 60 days plus the length of stay. And that can be a big bonus when you're trying to get those hard to get reservations. Check out this fashion. I'm, I'm sorry, that was bad. How dare I abandon my cowboy hats proper. Anyway, so pros of Wilderness Lodge. You've got some of the best theming in all of Disney World, hands down, especially in that lobby, which is absolutely spectacular. You have amazing restaurants. I had awesome eats today, and I'm sure I will in the morning for breakfast too. And you have some prime location. This resort is located so close to Magic Kingdom that I would have a fireworks view if fireworks were happening right now. So that's pretty prime location. When it comes to cons, you have to remember that this resort is gonna be on the pricey side. And for a deluxe resort, it's got smaller rooms. So when you're paying that much money, you might not want a 340 square, square foot hotel room. So something to keep in mind, it's definitely worth it in my opinion from a theming perspective, but if you don't have a resort day, that out of pocket cost is going to be pretty significant. Overall, Wilderness Lodge, super immersive, super magical. I love it here, but you will be forking out some serious cash for a night. So if you're somebody who's going to spend every waking moment that you can in the theme parks, maybe Wilderness Lodge isn't for you. You could look into a value or even a moderate if you wanted something a little bit nicer. If you're gonna have a resort day and the theming, some of the things we've looked at today, the restaurants really appeal to you here at Wilderness Lodge, it might be worth the splurge, but you really do have to decide what's best for your family and for your preferences when it comes to your Disney stay. That just about does it for my evening here at Wilderness Lodge. I'm waking up in the morning, I'm gonna check out breakfast at Roaring Fork with the chicken and waffles. I'm excited. And I'm also gonna check out transportation to the Magic Kingdom. And guess what? We're going via boat, baby. I'm excited. I love a boat. Plus, I got to see how these beds work out. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It is a brand new day. I am up and ready to go. Here's the plan. So it's about 7 a.m. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go down. We're going to check out the boat docks and see how busy they are because people rope dropping Magic Kingdom might be wanting to look at the boats about now. Now, I did see that the boats are posted as starting at 30 minutes prior to the parks opening, but I've been hearing boat horns. So I don't know if they're running yet. I know that sometimes transportation starts a little early, but we are super close to Magic Kingdom, so maybe that's not the case. We're gonna find out. Then we're gonna take a break, have some chicken and waffles for breakfast from Roaring Fork. I think I'm gonna eat them up here because what's a hotel room for if not eating chicken and waffles in, right?
All right, while well, I walk over to breakfast, so I did order from Roaring Fork from bed around 6.30, even though Roaring Fork doesn't open until 7. I did that same mobile order trick I did yesterday, and that's because these quick service restaurants can get kind of rushed about an hour prior to Magic Kingdom open at the hotels, and I didn't want to be stuck waiting a really long time for my food, so I just ordered early to make sure that I could get into the order window. Now that I'm here, I'm going to tap I'm here and go ahead and wait for my food out here, I think. Alright, here's a peek at that line at the boat dock at this time. Got a fair amount of people here. Right now it's about 45 minutes prior to Magic Kingdom opening. And our timing is impeccable because there's a boat pulling up right now. Um, and I will say from experience... That entire group is most likely going to fit on that boat, even with social distancing guidelines. Which means that the waits for the boat in the morning here, at least on this kind of almost cloudy Monday, aren't that bad. All right, food's ready. Oh, I love some banjo in the morning. The gold rush was so nice, I got it twice. Um, and this time they gave me a super big straw. Crazy. I can take such big sips with so little effort. All right, chicken and waffles time. So these are actually served all day, which is awesome. I actually am a breakfast for dinner kind of person. So that super seems like the kind of thing I would do. It's just Mickey shaped waffles. Uh, you get some maple syrup and then this is pecan butter. And I'm so thrilled. Also, of course, chicken. I'm very excited. This looks like a yummy breakfast. It's honestly the perfect portion size. Two Mickey waffles and two little chicken tenders is like perfect for me. And I'm so excited about this pecan butter. All right, let's do it. Let's try it. It wouldn't be Mickey waffles without a good syrup pour. You got to fill all the crevices of Mickey, Mickey's face. And it's on the chicken, too, because I can't be tamed. Oh, man. I didn't get a fork. All right, well, my hands are about to be real sticky. Don't be like me, kids. Get a fork. Don't judge me for eating with my hands. I forgot a fork. In my hotel room, it was a travesty. Mickey waffle time. I just straight took a bite out of Mickey's face. I didn't eat the ear first. I'm just going crazy this morning. He's pretty good. He's a, I mean, he's a Mickey waffle. He's got Mickey waffle batter. He's kind of like vanilla-y, super soft, but with that like awesome slight crunch on the outside. Mickey waffles are the bomb. On top of that, they're shaped like Mickey. I can see his whole face. I bit his old whole face. I'm sorry about that, Mickey, but you're delicious. I will say I'm not big on, uh, syrup that's not 100% maple syrup which I don't know maybe I'm maybe I'm elitist with my syrups which is always a bummer for me is that you get just breakfast syrup but Mickey waffles are so good that I don't really mind it mm. I'm gonna augment that bite with some chicken and the pecan butter mmm this is an awesome breakfast if you like Mickey waffles if you like chicken <laughs> You're probably gonna like this. It's tasty, it's great for picky eaters, but it's also not so basic that um, more adventurous eaters would be bored with it. I'm loving it. I, it feels hearty. I feel like I would be able to fuel a solid park morning with this breakfast, so. Great portion size, very delicious. I'm loving this breakfast. My favorite thing I've eaten here, which surprises me. Checkout is at 11 a.m. There are a limited number of late checkouts available of 12 p.m. But checkout is automatic, so if your bill is correct, it should come to your email. And if it is correct, you're good to go. You don't have to stop by the front desk. Now, check that bill out, make sure that nothing's wrong. And if anything is wrong, you can head to the front desk to get it corrected. All right, I've had a very satisfactory breakfast. And now, I've got to take the boat over to Magic Kingdom. I'm seeing a good amount of people stream that direction. So we might have a little bit of a wait when we're headed that way. But first, I'm gonna check out the buses. You can find the bus stop if you're facing the building. It's to the right of the main building. 
So it can be a bit of a long walk from some of those cabins, but most rooms are going to be pretty close to the bus stop, especially when you compare it to a value or a moderate. There is a good chunk of people here. Um, it's about, it's a little before 8 a.m. still, so some of the parks, it's still more than an hour before they open. But I think in most cases, the buses are going to be able to load most of the groups who are waiting. So from Wilderness Lodge, you can find water lunches um, or water taxis, both names, for transportation between Magic Kingdom and here. All right, and I made it to Magic Kingdom in an under 10 minute boat ride with zero weight from Wilderness Lodge. Keep in mind that if you have an ECV or a stroller, you might have to take that bus, which will probably take a little bit longer than the boat. But I had an awesome trip here this morning. It was super easy and I'm at the Magic Kingdom. So when in my book, a great way to start my day, chicken and waffles and a boat ride. I hope you enjoyed following along with me on our tour of Disney's Wilderness Lodge today. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe to this video and let me know in the comments where you'd like to see me go next. You can follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Quincy and I've had such a fun time. See you soon. Want more All Ears videos? Click here. And want to subscribe? You can do that right here. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you real soon.